let us discuss about red blood cells. It is one of the component of blood. Let us have a small introduction about red blood cells. So red blood cells which are commonly known as RBCs are non-nucleated. That is these cells will not be having nucleus. This RBC is also known as erythrocyte. It is red in color due to presence of hemoglobin. It also plays a vital role in respiration that is mainly in transport of gases exchanges. So comparing to the other components like WBC and platelets, this RBC is generally larger than other cell like WBC and platelets. So what is the normal value of RBCs? For adult male, it is about 5 million per cubic millimeter and for adult female, it is 4.5 million per cubic millimeter. So moving on to morphology of red blood cells, normal shape is disc and biconcave. That is, it looks like a dumbbell shape. So thicker at the peripheric ends and thinner at the center. Normal size, diameter will be of 7.2 mu. Volume is about 85 to 90 cubic mu. Surface area 120 square mu. Thickness, periphery, it will be thicker, so 2.2 mu and central it will be thin, so it is of 1 mu. And this is how the red blood cell look like. The first peak is of surface view and second one is a sectional view. Then normal structure, so it is obviously non-nucleated and the only mammal with nucleus is a camel. So as it is non-nucleated, it also doesn't have a DNA. And RBC has a special type of cytoskeleton made up of actin and spectrin. Both are anchored to transmembrane protein by another protein named as anchorin. So what are the properties of RBC? The main properties of RBCs are Rolex formation, specific gravity, which is of about 1.092 to 1.101, back to cell volume, suspension stability. So let's see a brief explanation about Rolex formation. So when blood is taken out of the blood vessel, the RBC piles up one above another like the pile of coins. So this property of RBC is called as Rolex formation. It is accelerated by plasma proteins, globulin and fibrinogen. So as we discussed specific gravity is about of RBC is 1.092 to 1.101. So moving on to the next point back to cell volume. Packed cell volume is the proportion of blood occupied by RBCs expressed in percentage. So the proportion of blood occupied by RBC. It is also called hemocritic value and it is 45 percentage of blood and plasma volume is 55 percentage. So moving on to the last property suspension stability. This is nothing but during circulation the RBCs remain suspended uniformly in the blood. This property of RBC is called the suspension stability. So the next lifespan of RBC. So average lifespan of RBC is about 120 days. After the lifetime, the senile old RBCs or destroyed in reticuloendothelial system. So lifespan of RBC is determined by radioisotope method. We can have a brief explanation about this in further videos. So moving on to the last point, fate of RBCs. The destruction occurs mainly in the capillaries of red pulp of spleen because the diameter of splenic capillaries is very small. So hence spleen is called the graveyard of RBCs. So once the RBC is destroyed into fragments, the hemoglobin is released from the fragmented parts. So this hemoglobin is immediately phagocytosed by macrophages of the body, particularly the macrophages present in liver, spleen and bone marrow. Uh, in liver, uh, the cells is Kupfer cells. So nothing but it uh, red blood cells get destroyed in the spleen. So once the RBC is destroyed into fragments, hemoglobin is phagocytosed by macrophages in these three parts, liver, spleen and bone marrow. Moving on to functions of red blood cells, it has four important functions. Transport of oxygen from lungs to tissues, transport of carbon dioxide from tissues to the lungs, buffering action in blood and in blood group determination. So transport of oxygen from lungs to tissue, 
hemoglobin in RBC combines with oxygen to form oxyhemoglobin. So about 97% of oxygen is transported in blood in form of oxyhemoglobin. So next, transport of carbon dioxide from tissue to lungs. Hemoglobin combines with carbon dioxide and form carbohemoglobin. About 30% of carbon dioxide is transported in this form. And RBC also contains a large amount of carbonic anhydrous. This enzyme is necessary for formation of bicarbonate from water and carbon dioxide. So from water and carbon dioxide, bicarbonate will be formed. And carbonic anhydrase is important to get the enzyme bicarbonate. So thus it helps to transport carbon dioxide in form of bicarbonate from tissues to lungs. So about 63% of carbon dioxide is transported in this form. So totally carbon dioxide is transported about 30% about in the form of carb hemoglobin and 63% by bicarbonate. That is, it will be uh, obtained from water and carbon dioxide because of carbonic anhydrase, which is present, which which is present in RBC. So next, buffering action in blood, hemoglobin functions as a good buffer. By this action, it regulates the hydrogen and concentration and thereby plays a role in the maintenance of acid base balance. Then in blood group determination, it has a, it carries blood group antigen like antigen A and B and RH factor. So this helps in determination of blood group. So this is a brief explanation about uh, RBC with introduction, morphology, properties and functions. Further variations of RBCs we will see in further videos.